Hey friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do another one of my popular One Set Four Ways series. I'll be featuring MFT's Flower Fairy stamp set. So I have stamped and colored three of these fairies during the Daily Marker 30 Day Coloring Challenge. I need a fourth, so I'm going to color one of these on camera today for you guys. If I would do all four in this video, it would be so long, and this is already going to be a long one, so I'll save that for another one. But I really want to focus on some pattern paper mixing today, so we're going to dive into that in a little bit. But first, I'm starting with this little girl here, and I wanted her skin to be a little bit of a darker brown, medium brown shade. So I'm using E51, E53, and E55. I'm laying in my shadows with the E55, and then filling in her arms and legs with that E53. I'll save that E51 for the front of her face to keep that part nice and bright so that her features don't get lost. And add in some R20 for some rosy cheeks so she looks nice and cheerful. For her hair, I wanted to do black since I have a blonde, a redhead, and a brunette already represented. So I'm going to use C7, C9, and B23. I know that maybe seems odd, but I wanted there to be a bluish undertone to her hair to match the pattern paper that I'm going to be using. So I'm starting with that C7 and just carefully going over the lines that the artist has drawn there. I'm not an expert at hair, but I have been practicing a little bit. So this is what works for me and I hope it'll work for you. It's just a, um, a, a more simplified version, but I think it still works and has some dynamics to it. Then I'm going to bring in the C5 and go over the edge of the C7. I haven't brought in the C9 yet because I just wanted to build up that color when I'm not sure where I'm going, especially since this is a color combo I have never used before. I try to skip the darkest shade until I'm sure that I want it. So now I'm bringing in the B23 and I'm going to continue to pull those colors out. And it does look kind of funny right now, but I think in the end result, it really works. Um, so just bear with me. Um, so I'm laying in that B23 next to that C5 and uh, sometimes next to the C7, just depending where I want it. I'm still saving some light areas for a highlight. And then I'm going to fill in a little bit of that with the C5. Now that I have that blue part laid in, I'm going to fill in those highlights with just a quick layer of that C5. I don't want to overwork it. So I'm going to finish up the curls on the end there. And then I am going to go in with that C9 and darken things up because it is looking a little bit more of a gray with a blue undertone and that's not what I'm going for. I really want it to translate as black hair. So once I laid in just a little bit of that C9, I'm going back to my C7 and deepening things up. Then I'm going to come back with my uh, B23 and add a bit more of that as well and um, just coming over the edges of that C7 and getting it all to blend and meld nicely together. I'll add another quick layer of that C5 just so that the darker areas aren't too stark. I do want everything to have a nice blend. And then I'm also going to grab the B21 and go over the C5 areas just to help them have a little bit more of that bluish tint to them. So once I have that all done, I'm gonna grab my colorless blender and just push back any areas where the color went that I didn't want it. So I'm just um, getting those areas back to white. And then I'll move on to her dress. I'm using BG45 and BG49 for that. I really wanted her dress to be a dark turquoise to complement her hair. 
So I'm laying in that BG49 first and then blending out with the BG45. I'm not going to add a lighter shade because I want to keep that dark intensity, but I will add a double layer just to kind of beef up the contrast. So I laid in that shadow again and then just blended it out with the BG45. And then I'm also going to use those two shades to color in her shoes. I wanted the ruffle on the bottom of her dress to look white, so I'm going to use the BG10 and BG11 for that, just adding a little detail to each of those scallops on the uh, top left, and then blending out with the BG10 and letting that fade into white. And then for her wings, I'm going to start with the BG10 and just lay that in on both sides of her body, and then I'll blend that out with the BG70 which is a very, very pale blue-gray shade that works great for wings. It just gives them that ethereal effect. For the little heart in her hair, I'm using BG11 and BG13. I did the same color barrette for all of the little fairies in their hair. And I'm also going to use those two shades to color in the leaves. Since there's no green at all in this pattern paper, I decided to use something a little bit different and color them in these same blue-green tones. I'm going to use my colorless blender again because I got a little bit out of the lines there. And then I'm going to move on to my flower. I'm going to keep the coloring of this nice and simple. I'm starting with the YR21 and kind of radiating out from the center. And then I'll go in with the Y11 on all of the tips so that they're nice and bright and light. And then um, blend a little bit more of that YR21 on. And then I'm going to come in with the YR23 and just select some of the petals to add that to, to darken them up and create a little bit of contrast. And then I'll add a little bit more of that Y11 to the tips. For the center, I'm just using E44 and E43, just to color that brown. And uh, that's going to finish up all of the coloring. So I'm going to add a little bit of a Spectrum Noir clear glitter overlay pen to the fairy's wings. And I did go over that a couple of times to make sure it was nice and sparkly. And then I trimmed this image out with the matching dies. I'll set that aside with the other three fairies that I've previously colored and we'll move on to the pattern paper. To keep things simple, I'm going to be creating my focal panels all out of that polka dot print. So I'm looking for some patterns that are going to go well with them. But I thought I would go through how I choose a pattern paper pad to purchase um, because I certainly don't purchase all the ones I see. What I'm looking for when I see the patterns is something that has a good mix of sizes and colors. I want things that are going to be bold, such as the ones that I'm showing on screen, but I'm also looking for a variety of patterns that will layer well together. So I don't want them to be all the same size or the same print or the same monochrome. If they're all tone on tone, you can't really layer them very well. Um, you want things to have bold lines, you want things to have small prints, you want things to be monochromatic. Um, you know, if you layered some of the things that I'm showing on screen, the size of the print is just way too similar. They're not going to look right layered on top of each other. You can see these three here. Um, the, the blueprint with the hearts is a little bit better because it is uh, more of a neutral, but it's still a too similar size of a print to the other ones that I'm showing there. So as I'm looking through, I'm just trying to find a mixture of uh, bold prints such as this navy and white stripe, and then also smaller prints that are going to work well, like this gold tone on tone. 
So I'm gonna pull out some various ones and then later on, as I trim things down, I'll go over how I choose which ones to layer. This pretty uh, pale aqua tone on tone is also pretty, or this gray heart print. Um, there's a gray polka dot that works great that's almost a neutral. Plaids are another one of my favorites that I'm always looking for. Polka dots are easy to layer. So those are just things to keep in mind. So I'm trimming down the pattern paper with the MFT gift tag die and then popping that into my Misty and stamping my sentiment with Versafine Onyx Black ink. Again, to keep this simple so that we can focus on the pattern paper, I'm going to use the same focal panel, same paper, and the same sentiment on all four cards. So it says, sending a sprinkle of love to brighten your day. And then I'm going to do all four card bases out of MFT's Snow Cone cardstock. I'm stamping on the inside with Lawn Fawn's Merman ink. And I'm going to stamp the sentiment that says, sending you a bunch of good wishes on all four cards, but I'm going to switch up the fairies that are on the inside. I think this is a great any occasion sentiment that'll work well for a variety of different things. So I'm going to reinforce the focal panel by adhering it to a piece of cheap white cardstock that I die cut with the same die. It's just Georgia Pacific from Walmart. I keep it only for this purpose. It just adds a little extra stability to that focal panel so that you can pop it up with foam tape and it's going to be a little bit more substantial on the card. So now I'm going to take all four of the fairies and adhere those to the focal panels with some liquid glue. So I'm just gonna grab those. It doesn't matter which one I add them to because they're all pretty much the same. The only difference is the positioning of the larger blue polka dots that are on there. But I pretty much just adhered them at random. I decided since the uh, brunette and the redhead's pigtails kind of overlapped the top edge of the focal panel that I would do that with the other two as well. So I just adjusted the dark haired fairy. And by the way, if you're interested in the different colors that I use for the various hair shades, I will be doing a favorites Copic video soon that will do skin tones and hair colors. So I'm working on that and it should be out in a little while. So stay tuned. So these are the four prints that I decided to make my base prints. I trimmed them all out with the Lawn Fawn stitched rectangle stackables so that they have that nice stitching detail. And then these four pieces here are going to be the uh, coordinating prints. So I'm going to kind of lay these out and kind of give you an idea of what looks right with what. So I'm not going to lay florals on top of florals. That doesn't really look right. So I put the florals on top of the stripes. I put the gold tone on top of the brighter colored floral because that's going to kind of subdue that just a little bit. It's going to pop against the navy stripe. So that works well. I didn't really like how this floral print worked with the gray hearts. It's not bad, but I felt like the tiny text print in the gray hearts was just clashing with the brightly colored florals. The brightly colored floral looks better on the diagonal stripe because it pulls all of those colors out. And the soft aqua floral looks better with the soft gray hearts. I just think that worked a little bit better. So now I'm going to begin to assemble all four cards. I'm using Tombow Mono Multi Glue to adhere my pattern papers, and I do get questions about whether or not that shows on the inside. I have never had that happen. It gives you such a small bead of glue that it just, it doesn't soak through the pattern paper to the inside of your card. So um, if you're using a liquid glue and it's doing that, you may wanna switch to the Tombow Mono Multi. And then I have added some foam tape to the backs of all of the focal panels. So I'm just going to peel off the release papers and get those lined up in the centers of the cards. And you can see that I even put the foam tape underneath the hole that is in the top of the tag. And that is because I don't want to use the hole. I want to cover that up. So I just added that foam tape. And then later on with the embellishments, I will finish that off. 
So here is card number two. I'm going to do that navy stripe and then have this pretty bold uh, floral print going down the sides. I decided to pair this with the red haired fairy since I colored her dress to be that nice dark blue. I thought that went best with that navy stripe. And I know that the um, it possibly reads a little bit black on screen, but it is a very dark navy blue in person. So I wanted to just shift that pattern paper over a little bit so that navy blue flower was showing there right to the left of the top corner of the focal panel to pull in that dress. And then card number three is going to be the gray hearts. So I'm adhering that down. And then the little strips that I added, those were all just uh, two and a quarter inches by three and three quarters inches. And I just trimmed those down with my paper trimmer all exactly the same size and then shifted them way over to the left, just keeping a little bit of that pattern paper showing on the left side, the, the base layer, I mean. And if you had wanted to, you could also do another print horizontally across the lower uh, portion of the card. I think that would look nice as well. But I just wanted to keep things really simple for today because I hear from a lot of you that you love pattern paper, you hoard it, but you're afraid to use it. And I really didn't want you guys to feel intimidated. I think pattern paper is such a great um product to use on your cards. I think it adds so much color and uh, texture and I just wanted you guys to feel confident to break out those pattern papers and try layering things up and using them on a card. So I'm going to finish off all four of these cards with some sparkling clear sequins from Pretty Pink Posh. I'm adhering those down with my new a uh, jewel picker from Studio Katia and some Ranger Multimedia Mat. Once I have all of those placed, I'm going to take some crystal stickles and fill in all of the holes. And then I'm also going to add a little bit to the bow in their hair, the little heart I should say, and the centers of the flowers. So there is a look at all four cards. I will hold them each up to the camera so you can see all of the detail and give you another peek at the inside. So you can see that the fairy inside uh, coordinates well with the one on the outside. I made sure that it's a different one for each. And of course, all four of these cards have a lot in common with the focal panel being the same and the layout and the stamping and the embellishments but each one being colored differently gives them their own unique spin. So they work great as a set, but of course could also be sent out individually. So I really hope this video helped you guys out. I know a lot of you have asked for videos on pattern paper mixing. So um, I thought this one with the four different combinations in one video might just give you a clearer picture. And if you have any questions, you can leave me them in the comment section below. I also have an entire playlist on pattern paper mixing. So you can check that out if you'd like something further. And uh, if you did enjoy the video, please go ahead and hit that thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't already. You can also ring that notification bell if you want to be sure that my videos always end up in your feed. And if you'd like to keep watching, here are two extra videos I thought you might also enjoy. I hope you all have an amazing day. Bye-bye.